Oh, maybe not. Okay. Uh, hello, everyone. Uh, good, af good afternoon, good evening, good night, good morning, wherever you are in the world. Uh, welcome to our last webinar of the academic year before we take a break for the summer. Uh, this webinar is specifically about IFLA opportunities for LIS students and how you can become more engaged in the profession. Um, for, but first, I would like to uh, thank our chair, Albina, for being with us today and she would like to open the session with a few words from her. Uh, thank you, Dan. Uh, good morning, good afternoon, good evening to everyone. I'm delighted to welcome you at the webinar series for library and information science students brought to you by the professional units of the division uh, C uh, of IFLA. My name is Albina Krimska and I'm an associate professor of uh, LIS department in St. St. Petersburg State University of Culture, and I'm the chair of the section on education and training. Today, we're having an unusual webinar in, in our series, because uh, usually we, we invite a keynote speaker and uh, several students to talk uh, on a certain topic, but today we decided to, uh, brought, uh, to bring uh, all uh, our sections and uh, six uh, from Division C. And we are very happy that uh, we will see different tips and uh, advice uh, from our uh, colleagues um, from uh, Division C units. And we hope that this uh, webinar will, will be very useful for LIS students and they will know how they can use those opportunities that IFLA uh, gives them and uh, they will know how they can enter the professional community, uh, the International Library Association, and how to enter the profession. So welcome to everyone. And uh, we are happy that you're here with us today. Thank you. Thanks, Alpina. Uh, if, uh, Suzanne, if you could go ahead and start the slides now um, for our introduction, thank you. Uh, and I realized I forgot to introduce myself. Um, I'm Dr. Diane Rasmussen Pennington. I'm a senior lecturer, associate professor at the University of Strathclyde High School in Glasgow, Scotland, uh, originally from the border of America and Canada. And so people never know what, really where I'm from because my accent is a lot of things. So I'm um, happy to be here with you today. And uh, we like to get started by just going over a few basics for the webinar, uh, just uh, some privacy issues as well. If you could go to the next slide, please. This event is being recorded, including the chat, and we will post the video on YouTube after it is over so on, our, um, on our channel for the IFLA SET committee. 
And uh, it, also, oh, sorry, it will also be posted on the IFSA deficiency webpage for the link as well. So go ahead and look for that uh, when it's over if you want to share with anyone else. If you do have any questions or comments, you can type them either into, well, you can say hello to people in the chat. We would prefer that you could click on the Q&A button at the bottom of your Zoom screen if you have a question so that the, we can keep track of which questions we've answered and, and to mark them off as, as they get addressed. And so uh, next slide, please. This is our, our schedule for the session. Uh, we first have a welcome from Dilara from Division C of IFLA and an introduction from Helen uh, from the IFLA staff. And then we'll go into our individual presentations. So now let's let's start with uh, our welcome from our Division C representative. Dilara, are you there? Yes, I'm there. Thank you very much. Uh, I think indeed it's a very good uh, environment and uh, engagement with other people and good to see you everyone. Uh, I would like to welcome uh, on behalf of Division C to organize this kind of uh, webinar. I think this is a very essential, essential uh, uh, you can say that uh, the webinar for the LIS students because nowadays LIS students are more interested to connect with the associations. So this is the right time to take this kind of initiatives. Uh, so that's why I thank you everyone, those who are actively involved with this, uh, uh, organizing this uh, you know, webinar. Uh, I would like to say some, some words regarding the IFLA, the vision of this IFLA, you know, to establish a strong and united global library field where basically, you know, empowering literate, informed, and participatory societies. And our mission is basically to inspire, engage, enable, and connect the people. So in that case, I think this kind of webinar basically help us to inspire people, engage more, more people globally, not only locally, and they can enable to, to know a lot of things, what we are doing, and the connectivity will be increase. Uh, I, I'm, I'm working as associate professor and the chairperson of the Department of Information Studies and Library Management uh, in, 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 at East Coast University. So I, I basically found that my students are very much interested to know about this global field, what we are doing, and how the association can be helpful for them. And if you think about the IFLA, IFLA has now, it's like a it's just a new structure, like under the governing body, we have a regional council, then professional council and advisory committee. And, 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 and this professional council basically uh, divided into some divisions like A to H division. Now it's newly established by the uh, governing body. And, and the division C is part of the professional divisions. Basically, a uh, professional division committee actually help us uh, to enable an effective timely communication between the professional units, uh, especially the IFLA staffs and the professional council. And to assist the professional units with the collaboration or coordination of the professional activities. And that is basically, uh, you better know about the IFLA's work, how they are working, what we are doing. Uh, every division, they have their own structures, like the division C, it's comprised of some of the, you know, units or uh, sections, as, you know, all the sections are over here today, as I assume, and especially like continuing professional development and work learning uh, section, education and training section, library theory and research section, management and library association section, LS education in developing countries and special interest section, um, and new professional special interest section is consist of professional division C committee. The, the, the mission of this committee, professional division C committee, to support the IFLA strategic direction that direction basically to inspire, engage, enable, and connect. And you'll be happy that uh, uh, the education and uh, training section, they have you know, organized uh, with, the, with the help of other sessions this webinar. And, and this section basically focus on uh, to, to find out the 
need of the future librarians and what are the challenges they are facing and because you know this is the uh, information is go is you know everything is changing rapidly so we need to know how to cope with this situation how to do better in their career because ls this uh, you know uh, the students they are the future leader and I found that most of my students are aware of these activities because uh, in our uh, you know, curriculum, we have in, incorporated one of the section uh, to know about the associations. And I think a few students also show their interest to become a member of the IFLA, individual memberships. And I think this is a very good sign because this kind of webinar actually help us to know each other. This is the right platform where we can share our knowledges and uh, people can know uh, what is happening globally. And one of the great initiatives basically um, taken by uh, the group of uh, one group that is uh, taken by the IFLA education and training section, LIS education in developing countries, um, a special interest group that is and library theory and research group that is actually building strong library information science education group that group is basically taking this initiative to know about what kind of you know allies program are available globally so they are trying to actually create a database and a system map uh, to know about this region and they also try to, you know, uh, working on developing the resources for LS educations globally. Uh, and the third project basically uh, that is called, you know, Library Information Science Student Voice. So in that uh, particular, you know, project, we are basically will be benefited, like what we are doing in developing country and what are uh, doing in developed countries. So between two things, we can easily understand and, and we can know the, uh, you know, the field, what we are doing in future, what kind of activities we can do, even in, in our pro professional, professional career. So uh, mapping LS education program is, is a great initiative. So I, uh, and, and previously it was like, uh, I think it's in my institutions is very much needed for the students. People came to me and they wanted to know about what are kind of uh, in a program are available globally. So that map is it's actually a very good initiative and it's ongoing pro program. And any other section, like other section, CPWL, they are also actively involved. They, they have doing their best to do something, especially there. One of the activities is very, I would like to mention that is um, it's organized by a management and marketing section and CPWL that is coaching initiatives. That is also very much interest for, for the LIS education um, students and the professionals. Uh, uh, I think uh, as, uh, though each in unit they have, they will describe their own activities, what they are doing, and how the LS profession, LS students and professionals, future professionals will be benefited uh, in their career through these associations. I would like to. I would not like to tell more details, but I would like to stop over here to say thank you to all everyone, those who have you know joined today in this very important webinar. And I hope you'll be benefited for, um, from this webinar and uh, especially LS students, because this is, a, this is the right platform where we can engage the national and international uh, students. And not only students, we can talk about some research project, we, how we can collaborate with each other. And uh, of course, we can gain new skills, new knowledge through attending this kind of webinar and we can connect uh, to the IFLA global network. And we, of course, through these activities, we, we hope we'll build a good professional network. So with these few words, I would like to conclude over here. So again, I would welcome to all in, on behalf of Division C and hope you will enjoy this webinar. Thank you very much. Thank you all for inviting me. Thank you, that was really great. Um, it's always good to get to be reminded why I'm involved in IFLA, and that was really great for me as well. So thank you. Um, next, we have Helen from uh, IFLA, who's the De Deputy Secretary General. Uh, are you there, Helen? Yes, thank you. Um, thank you very much for inviting me, and it's good to see such a, a good turnout of people who've registered for the seminar and the webinar this afternoon. I think we've had a good introduction from Delara about the whole structure of the sections of IFLA. So I don't want to talk about that, but I wanted to talk a little bit about 
what it's like when you're in a library and information science student. You're often very concentrated on your subjects and the content that you have to learn and complete and research. And I think sometimes you don't understand that there's, you know, this, this world out there that's waiting for you. And I think when I was at library school, I found out really that librarianship and library and information science is a profession. That means there are people, professionals who take the, their work incredibly seriously and who are prepared to put in a lot of effort around that. And many people do that through their national association in their country. And that's a great place to start. And that's where I started with my national association and getting involved in some of their smaller groups. But I wasn't really thinking about this world of librarianship that's out there. And in fact, sometimes when I've spoken to students and I ask them, what do you know about IFLA? Some students will say they don't really know much about it at all. They've heard the word, but they don't know what it is. Others might say, oh, IFLA is a conference, but IFLA has a conference, but isn't actually a conference. And some might say, well, it's IFLA is something for library directors. And I think the session today is really that IFLA is none of those things. It's something that you can engage with as a student and certainly as a professional once you start your career. IFLA is in fact a federation. It's an association of associations of library institutions, so national libraries, all different kinds of libraries, and of individuals. And we have over 1,500 members in 130 countries. And if you look at just the names and where people are from in this webinar today, it's just exciting to see us all gathered together from places around the world. I saw Chinese colleagues in the participant list from Philippines, from Nigeria, from everywhere. And that's the exciting thing about being part of IFLA. So IFLA is there to actually work on your behalf. So we have people in, an, in our headquarters. We have a small headquarters staff of 20 people, but we have over a thousand experts like the people here on these panels that are actually working on your behalf, whether you're a student or a professional, a new graduate. What we're doing is working together to try and move the profession forward in a whole lot of different areas. In all areas and sectors of expertise, we want to produce new information. We want to help with training sessions. That's what IFLA is, this group of people committed to working on behalf of librarians everywhere. And why does IFLA do that? Because only IFLA can do some things. Your local library or your institution can't go to the United Nations and try and make a case for uh, better development. IFLA can do that on your behalf. IFLA can work with the UNESCO on protecting cultural heritage. IFLA can work with WIPO on getting better copyright conditions for libraries. So we do all of that for you at the international level. What does, why do you need to even know about this as a student? Well, um, I'm, I'm sorry, Helen, um, we need to, we're already a bit behind time. Okay. Um, so if you could just, if I could just remind everyone that uh, everyone gets about 10 minutes. Uh, yep. If we keep it to that, that time. Um, sure. if, so if I've got time, two more points. So I'll just. Sure. No problem. Thanks. Those. Thanks. So one is, yes, you can join as a student. You can join IFLA and you get discounts and uh, a range of other benefits. But I think what I'd like you to take away from today is that IFLA is there for you. We produce very practical things like guidelines that you can use in your work and in your study. We produce um, a range of standards and a lot of things you can have for free, like attending these kinds of webinars. They're often held in languages. 
such as Spanish or Arabic, and uh, you should try and make use of those. So I think take away the fact that IFLA is an organization, a global organization that's there for everyone, including you as an LIS student. And I hope that you listen to what's going on today. And then as your career progresses, that you make use of getting involved and engaging in your local association. And then as you gain more experience with IFLA as well, and to stay in touch with everything that we do. So Diane, that finishes up for me. So I wish you all the best and uh, an enjoyable webinar. That's great. <laughs> Thanks, Rick. Thanks very much. So now we'll go into the hearing from the different SIGs that are here for us. So first we have um, the very famous and distinguished Lita Garcia Febo, who's uh, speaking on behalf of the Management of Library Association section. Thank you so much, Diane. Um, I am going to share my screen. Hello, everyone. We are IFLA strong. Yes, uh, we are, as uh, Delara said, and Helen, uh, we are strengthening the library field globally. And today I'm going to speak about management of library associations and how we are supporting new librarians. That's my section where I am currently the information coordinator. And I'm very happy also to be uh, IFLA uh, Division C secretary. So uh, MLAS, as we call it, uh, it uh, uh, includes dynamic leaders from library associations who seek to advocate for the interest aspirations and concerns of the library associations represented among the IFLA members. So MLAS is composed mainly of leaders uh, from these library associations from around the world. And our mission is to build and support strong and well-managed library associations. Um, during the pandemic, we post uh, part of the IFLA from home and um, in, uh, I wanted to include this uh, post here so you can perhaps look it up. And it was titled IFLA MLAS plus the IFLA strategy engaging our membership. And we have, as I said, a library association that we work with and the library associations are serving and supporting new librarians as well. And so um, we are doing this based on many areas of the IFLA strategy, but we decided to highlight 4.3 to increase uh, and diversify and engage our membership. And um, the 4.3 also speaks about fostering and improving leadership skills and sharing experiences, developing our publications and supporting IFLA core programs and uh, of effective library associations. I also wanted to call attention to webinars that we have presented, and they are all, again, supporting not only library associations, but um, uh, LIS students and new librarians. And this one was about the library map of the world. And uh, here's some information about that event. It's all online. I wanted to uh, present it to you quickly today. So you keep that in mind. Um, we are also engaging virtually uh, and trying to be creative about what we do. And um, one of the things that that we've done is that we have partnered with uh, CPDWL and with the new professionals in campaigns such as the one you are seeing on my screen now, which was a creation of a meme. And we see meme in our regular life, and now we had some memes uh, within EFLA. And this was about what is EFLA MLIS planning to support associations during EFLA from home. And this was during the height of the pandemic. Um, I also want to mention that um, we did have uh, uh, many uh, meetings online during the pandemic, and we always include the new professionals development group. And you can see uh, Magdalena is the convener is there on the photo. And talking about that, um, 
the um, management of library association has been sponsoring the new professionals from EFLA since 2004 when they were established and I'm very happy to have co-established that and um, and I know Paria will come later and speak about them but I wanted to show um, some of the photos. This was one of our last photos in person. This is in Kuala Lumpur, and I'm always very happy to continue with them as an advisor. They have a, um, a global uh, webinar series, New Variants Global Connections, that I co-established, and um, I invite you to check it out in their YouTube and other um, information channels. And um, uh, it's really great what they're doing because they are very multicultural and multilingual, and it reflects uh, inclusivity and diversity within IFLA. So there you have a snapshot of them. I wanted to uh, pause and really speak about the webinar series. MLAS is presenting this uh, semester. We have um, a focus on diversity and leadership. And we started to plan this last October and finally it came to fruition and we started to present them in March. And um, there are six webinars featuring all the regions from IFLA or the different divisions. And right now we have presented four of those and June will be the next one. I want to, um, for instance, share with you only the screenshots of the speakers. This is from the North American experience that was in March. This is from the European experience on April 7th. And um, just a couple of days ago, we had the one from MENA uh, from the uh, Middle East and North Africa uh, region. And we yesterday, we had the Sub-Saharan African experience. All these webinars include uh, new and experienced leaders. And we want to uh, encourage libraries around the world to develop leadership and to grow uh, new leaders and nurture them at the same time to foster diversity. So it's very important. And you can see each one of the uh, webinars includes a new librarian that is new to leadership as a speaker, because we want to strengthen that area within all the library associations around the world. And the upcoming webinars will be on June 15th that is for the Latin American and Caribbean experience and the Asia and Oceania experience will be on June 21. I also want to uh, encourage you all to check out uh, the uh, date and time for our um, event during the uh, IFLA Congress in Dublin and um, that will be uh, really great. It's on um, July by 25, I think it's at 8.30 in the morning, very early, but we are going to feature new librarians on video, new librarians on a panel presentation, and they will all speak about their journey to leadership and how uh, they also have uh, experience and are fostering diversity. So uh, new librarians and students are very important for the management of libraries. So, and we are here to continue supporting them in every way we can, including with the new professionals from IFLA. So thank you very much. And let's continue uh, being IFLA strong. IFLA strong indeed. Thanks, Weda. Uh, so our next speaker is, is, is Paria. She will be talking about the new professional special interest group. All right. Um, hi, everyone. I am Peria. I am a part of the new professional thing, and I'm really excited to be here to talk to you about all the opportunities that you can have through NP SIG um, by, you know, getting engaged with this line, growing the field. A little bit about our group. So NP SIG stands for New Professional Special Interest Group. We are part of the Professional Division C, and we are sponsored by Management of Library Association sections. But we really are a global network. We have members from all over the world. What we would really like to do is connect new professionals together, inspire new professionals. This group is for new librarians and also for LIS students. So if you would like to learn more about us. If you would like to join us, I will give you our email address at the end of this presentation and feel free to send us an email. We, as Loida mentioned, we were founded in 2004. So Loida was a founding member. 
Um, we were founded in AFLA Congress Buenos Aires, and that was because Loida and the two other members saw a need for having a group that was for new professionals in IFLA, and we were born for that need. Um, I wanted to tell you about my own um, journey with NPSIG, and maybe that will help you learn a little bit more about us. I joined NPSIG about three years ago. I learned about it through ALA magazine, and there was an email that said, if you would like to join us, send us an email, and I did. And ever since then, all of the opportunities that I had, it has been an amazing experience. I had the opportunity to uh, moderate webinars, uh, to present like what I'm doing now. I got engaged more with our social media. And let me tell you a little bit of more about what we do. And hopefully you will also join us. So some of our activities, we, um, hold lots of webinars. We cooperate with different IFLA groups like CPDWL or MLAS. We have cooperated with ALA. And the topics of our webinars are about very different topics. Like we had webinars about music. We had webinars about design thinking, about leadership. And we have held more than 35 webinars. We have, we have had more than 100 speakers from all over the world, more than 1,000 participants from all over the world. So this could be an opportunity for you if you would like to help moderate the chat or if you would like to help moderate the webinar or present. This could be something that, you know, if you join us, this could be a, an opportunity for you. Something else that we do, we hold Congress sessions. So in IFLA, we have held Congress sessions since 2010. Um, unfortunately, the Congress was canceled last time. It was online. So in 2021, our session was about music session. It was a music session. It was a music contest. So what we asked was, uh, we asked the librarians to make music and send it to us. Um, the year before in 2019 in Greece, we had a session about library love stories. In Malaysia in 2018, we had a session about library fashion. So this could be something else that if you're interested to join and get experience about it, you can send us an email and let us know. Since I was talking about the different sessions that we have had, I wanted to tell you about our special conference or what we would like to say on conference because um, it is different from conference. It's, it's free. It is two days before IFLA Congress and it is different because we don't really invite keynote speakers. The speakers are you, the speakers are the MP SIG members. And the first day is usually discussions. We have like different activities. And then the second day is fun activities. Like for example, in Greece, we had the Library Olympics at the beach. In Malaysia, we did sightseeing. So we got on a bus, we went to the Batu Caves. In Poland, we did cycling. So we are really excited that this um, year, you're going to have IFLA Camp 8. If you would like to come to IFLA Camp, the link is right down there. It's iflacamp.wordpress.com. You need to register. Or that QR code on the right-hand side, that will also take you to that webpage. And this is going to be in Dublin, of course. It is, as I mentioned, two days before the IFLA Congress. So it's going to be in July 23rd and 24th. The first day, we are going to be in DLR Libraries. It's a beautiful library. We are going to have a skill camp. We're going to have sketch note workshop, we are going to have discussions, and we're going to have some other topics that we will talk about. The second say it's sightseeing Dublin. So this could be a you know good opportunity for you to get to know us more, to get to know what we do. And then if you're interested, you can join us. So this is free, but you just have to register. Make sure that you register because we need to know how many people will be joining us. Uh, we are on social media. So you can keep in touch with us through social media. We are on Facebook, we are on Twitter, we are on Instagram, and we also have a blog, which uh, is mpsic.wordpress.com. And through social media, you can learn more about our webinars. So every time you're going to have a webinar, we will post it on our social media. All of our webinars are free. It, we also hold happy hours. So that's just a fun way, again, to get to know more about us. Our happy hours, we've had karaoke that we were singing together, we've had games, 
we the last one was where we talked about different fairy tales from our country so it's just a really fun way that you will get to know what we do and also get to know us more and as I mentioned I was going to give you our email address if you would like to join NPSIG our email address is npsig.isla at gmail.com so send us an email if you have any questions um, send us an email we'll definitely answer or if you would like to join us again send us an email and I am looking forward to hearing from all of you thank you thanks very much Priya that's a really great way for students to get to start to get involved in NIFLA so that's really helpful uh, so next we have uh, Jimmy G who is from my area of IFLA, which is the set committee section education and training, as well as the BSLISE. So she's going to be talking with you about the BSLISE opportunities that we have in our group. Thanks. Hi, can you hear me? Yes, thank you. Okay. Hello everyone, I'm Jumi. Uh, welcome to my presentation. Today, I will introduce the IFLA LIS education guidelines and other opportunities and resources briefly. For the guidelines, yes, thank you. I can't, oh, sorry. For the guidelines, I will uh, mention the background and uh, all these uh, terms. And uh, the IFLA BAS OIC working group emerged out of deliberate expressions at the 2016 IFLA satellite meeting on quality assessment of AIS education programs. After that, BAS OIC published its white paper from the results of the of an international survey and uh, initiated the IFLA guidelines of professional LIS education program, as well as international map and database of LIS education program. And this uh, has been mentioned uh, before. And uh, there are two findings from the survey and uh, two actions were implemented. Um, first uh, is to identify core and other competencies for transferability and the reciprocity. And the other is to develop an international framework for the assessment of quality standards in LIS education. And this is the authors of the uh, guidelines and uh, they are from six countries and the top two, Clara and Jaya are co-chairs of the BSAIC working group. The guidelines are now at the stage of approval. And the guidelines has been created to be applicable at any level of high education and it's for uh, LIS education administration and our uh, LIS students to ensure the LIS education offered and received meets international quality standards. And uh, there are nine guidelines of the yeah, insights. And uh, next, Look at the LIS definition at first, and uh, the guidelines refer library and information science as the field of study and a professional practice in education and scholarship. It's concerned with information in all its formats and processes. And as a Professional practice OS engages all aspects of the information life cycle, utilizes appropriate technologies in order to connect people anywhere to information. And this is the foundation areas, uh, foundation knowledge areas. Um, at this map, the eight FKS 
are placed in three groups. Information in society that will help our LIS, LIS students to understand and find working scenarios of the LIS profession. Foundations of the LIS uh, profession, information and uh, communication technologies, research and innovation will ensure LIS students to have lifelong professional literacy and the information resource management, management for information professionals in information needs and user services, literacy and learning are set to support LIS students engaging their LIS professional careers. And there are two program scenarios uh, offered by the guidelines. Uh, one program has, uh, it will has a set number of compulsory courses and the FKs will be included in them. And another program that will has three core course requirements plus electives and the students will select the elective courses based on their own specializations or guided by an advisor. And uh, the, each program should include practicing professionals and hands-on learning in teaching. Methodology and practices, matters of equity, diversity, inclusion, and accessibility should be coupled with pedagogy delivery and preparation. As a LIS student, I think you can join the lines to promote and implement the guidelines. You can share the guidelines to promote in your to promote it in your community, as well as use it to assess the LIS education that you ever be involved or to be pursued. And the guidelines committee, uh, you can find this uh, the yeah members from the committee and uh, we'll still the guidelines address associated questions, review and update the guidelines. And uh, this is the first resource of BSLIC for you. Uh, if you have any comments on the guidelines, please text it in the chat room. And then, uh, let's move on to the other resources and opportunities. The Student Spotlight social media campaign was started by a former intern. This project features LIS students from around the world. And the BSLIC YouTube channel development is uh, will feature interviews with current LIS professionals and education educators on topics such as the context of libraries in their countries, their library experience, and a discussion of what skills gained from their studies have been most helpful and what skills they think are important for current LIS students to develop and the student library voices peer to peer will develop a global network of LIS students and will give you the opportunity uh, to, share, to share your thoughts and opinions about the roles of LIS profession. And the international map of LIS education program and uh, uh, it's been mentioned uh, uh, detailed 
but I will uh, add something about uh, it. Uh, I think it will uh, help you to make some decisions uh, uh, when you uh, want to join an international LIS education program and uh, making some relationships with uh, LIS schools at institutional or individual levels. And uh, if you are interested in the news from the global schools, it could be one of your sites, I think. And uh, the last uh, uh, opportunities is about the internship. Um, BS LIC internship are opening to LIC students from around the world to help BS LIC maintain and promote social media websites and some projects. You can follow the BSLIC social media to be informed at the uh, first time, I think. And uh, last year, BSLIC just created a partnership with St. Jude State University High School in creating international scholar program. For those who are care of more information, Please don't hesitate to browse all pages. And uh, that's all for me. Uh, this is the website uh, address of the um, more opportunities and resources of uh, BSLICE. Thank you. Thanks, Jimin, for outlining so well the really important work that we do. So next we have uh, colleagues from the Library Theory and Research section, and that will be Egbert Sanchez and Debbie Schachter, if you both are ready. Thank you, Diane. Okay. Uh, we want to thank the organizing committee uh, of this webinar and also uh, to Albina, for, her, for this great job. Uh, first of all, uh, Debbie, Carla, and I myself want to, to share with you uh, what <coughs> we, are, we were doing during the last five years and, uh, and hope it will be of your interest. The section of library theory and research is concerned itself with the continuing development uh, of library and information science through the theoretical and applied and applied research in all the aspects of the discipline. Here we, we can have the next slide. We can see that uh, we have uh, colleagues from all over the, the world. We have colleagues from the uh, from Oceania area. We have colleagues from uh, India, South Africa, uh, Europe, uh, South Europe, uh, North America and uh, North America, where we have uh, four colleagues, one colleagues in Canada and one from Mexico. And if you can see over the last five years, uh, we have done uh, research and not only research uh, from the section itself, we are uh, connected with other section. The next slides, please. And also we are sponsoring uh, one of the section that is a history, a, a special interest group uh, where we share professional library knowledge and its contribution to the global voice of the library and information profession. Uh, there are current projects going on in this uh, special interest group that's preparing for the IFLA uh, centenary uh, 2027 all our histories and some research program. And they're open in Dublin, uh, the 26th, with the sources and themes for historiography of the IFLA. The governor of this uh, special interest group is a Professor Ana Maria Tamaro. So as you can see, our, our section during the last five years have a joint uh, partnership and joint program also joined the research with preservation and conservation section with the set and training section 
with the social uh, science li li libraries uh, section, with the information literacy, with uh, the containment professional development workplace learning section, and also with IFLA children. Uh, also, we have some satellite meetings that were uh, we have done with other uh, with some section, and it was great to hear uh, Juing Li uh, contribution because we are part of uh, the building strong libraries and information science education. We are part of, of that great team. Uh, with our representation, uh, Clara Chu. And we, we, uh, we have also satellite meeting with preservation and conservation section, the uh, uh, education and training section, and also with social libraries section, we have some collaborations. Next, please. So, uh, some previous research, uh, during Lee have also talked about that, uh, that uh, all those uh, research made for the buildings, uh, the, B, the Bliss working group. And we have worked together also with SET. And at the moment we have uh, teaching uh, research methods and LIS education uh, going on. And I will share uh, the screen and also the floor with uh, Debbie Schechter the secretary of this group, this section. Thank you. Just uh, starting up again with the current research, which we are um, completing with our data analysis. And Egbert is participating as part of that uh, process in which we did conduct global research into the teaching of research methods in LAS education. And we have had the opportunity to present at various conferences and are looking forward to um, some future opportunities to share the uh, outputs and the analysis of our data. And, and at the same time, we are looking into our future planned research. And there is a group uh, led by Kawana Bright who will be looking into the question of equity and global scho scholarship. And that group is beginning to work together. And so, as you can imagine, this is a, something to look forward to as a, um, an LIS student who is interested in research as well. The other opportunities to get to know our section include our Congress joint section with SET uh, at Willett uh, 2022. That is IFLA guidelines for LIS education programs. We also have our open business meetings. So anyone who's interested can participate as a, um, uh, as a viewer, um, sorry, as a guest uh, to observe our meetings. We have our first meeting on the Monday of the conference and we are looking forward to having a second one. So this is one way to get to know the section. And this is true for all of the sections in case people are interested. Uh, we will also have a satellite meeting and uh, this slide shows how the section has developed satellite meetings um, in association with Willick each year. And most specifically coming up this uh, July will be our global comparative research design in library and information science that will be held uh, the weekend following the conference. Registration is now up on the Willick uh, website for this satellite workshop. This is a active workshop over two days with some speakers and the opportunity for people working on projects to have some uh, support and expertise to help uh, develop research questions and uh, some of their research methods. And that is all we have. And I understand we'll have questions afterwards. So I will stop sharing my screen. Thank you very much for your time. Thank you very much. Thank you, Debbie and Egbert. That's really informative. Uh, so next we have Gina, and Gina will be speaking to us about the LIS Education in Developing Countries Interest Group. Hello and greetings from Sri Lanka. 
I'm Gina De Alvis. Um, I've been working in Singapore for the last 30 years. So I've been shuttling between Sri Lanka and Singapore. Uh, to give you an idea about uh, what we do in the interest group, our activities focus on the LIS curriculum, programs, expertise, accreditation, and standards for librarians in developing countries. The special interest uh, group was established in 2009. Members of the committee come from the US, Malaysia, Singapore, China, and Colombia. In the next few slides, I will share some examples of opportunities the special interest group offers LIS students to engage with the LIS profession in developing countries. One example is through participation in conferences, IFLA conferences, which are offered in a few different ways. It can be sessions scheduled as part of the annual IFLA conference or satellite meetings, which may or may not be held in the host country or workshops, which are scheduled as part of the annual conference program. So for example, this year in Dublin, we are offering a workshop on enabling your library to leverage open education resources to create information literacy programs. It is scheduled for Thursday, July 28 at 12.45 p.m. Some information about the workshop for you. It is organized jointly with SET it will be hands-on and will provide a practical tool to help libraries deliver instructional services. The goal is to catalyze and support regional activity by enabling participants to connect with each other and to evaluate if they want to embark on a collaborative project at a regional level and to create local versions of an open educational resource. So, <coughs> excuse me, what will happen during the workshop is that participants will get to examine two open information literacy instruction tools, library DIY and library DEN, which support the development of library use skills and basic information literacy competencies and to evaluate the feasibility of using these for your home libraries. Workshop attendees will be encouraged to work together in groups based on shared language to outline a possible collaboration that would benefit libraries from the different regions. One of the workshop presenters is currently involved in a project with librarians from four Mexican institutions to translate and adapt these two resources to Spanish. Additionally, one of the 20 colleagues from Mexico <coughs> will join the workshop to share experiences of how this collaboration has worked and to offer strategies for librarians wanting to move forward with this project after the IFLA conference. So during the workshop, participants will begin networking face-to-face -face and then continue online to create a product. This workshop is designed to encourage and support librarians working together to distribute work and share results with the larger professional community. <coughs> it is a Excuse me. It is an initiative to translate and culturally adapt open educational resources to fit a local needs. Next, I would like to touch on one of our collaborative projects, which some of the speakers mentioned in passing. That's the IFLA Global Database and Map of LIC Schools and Programs. First, for some background, it's an international collaborative project 
launched by the IFLA Building Strong Library and Information Science Education Working Group and is an initiative of SET, the Library Theory and Research Section, and our interest group. Information captured in the database include degrees available, certifications offered, languages available within the program, registration for professional practice, and contact details. The map and data will be useful to potential and current LIA students to identify where the education opportunities exist worldwide and also to explore where you may wish to study or spend a year or semester of your program. Additionally, the map and data will be beneficial to members of the LIS community to establish pro professional relationships for potential collaborations, researchers in other countries, <coughs> excuse me, to access up-to-date data about LIS schools and programs, as well as professional requirements, LIS professional associations and policymakers to identify which programs of study exist and where they are located in order to understand local, regional and international strengths. Well, basically to identify competitors and collaborators in order to strengthen LIS education programs. And one last reason, raise public awareness about the education and training of LIS professionals. At this point, I would like to take the opportunity to appeal to the audience to please check if your school and other LIS schools you're associated with or aware of are represented on the map. If the answer is no, please contact the relevant faculty and help us get the map updated. We look forward to your support. And to the LI students out there, these are exciting times to be in the LIS profession, I assure you. So I wish you all the best and thank you. Thanks, Gina. That was great. I'm really glad to hear from you and all that. Um, we have just one last group to hear from, and that will be Edward and Ulrika from the LIS Educate, I'm oh, sorry, the Continuing Development Professional, Continuing Professional Development and Workplace Learning section. Sorry, it's five o'clock Friday here. <laughs> Are you both ready? Yeah. Thank you. Uh, I'm the lucky one who has to present uh, the, at, as the last, um, so I can use all these terrible abbreviations instead of the very complicated names of the EFLA sections. Uh, all you need is CPD, Continuing Professional Development. Um, the purpose of the IFLA section, Continuing Professional Development and Workplace Learning, is to develop a robust and varied selection of continuing professional development opportunities to better prepare IFLA and the global library workforce to support 21st century users. Thanks for giving me the time to present some of our ongoing projects. Beside conservative educational formats with a teacher and learners and a fixed sequence of learning units, it is important to create more formats centered on the individual. Helen mentioned that IFLA is providing guidelines. Actually, most the sections do. So we are presenting the guidelines for continuing professional development, principles, and best practices. Uh, we have uh, prepared these originally published in 2016. It underscores the fact that the future of the LIS profession depends on ongoing learning and professional development. The specific roles and responsibilities of individuals and institutions are highlighted. The learner, the employer, professional associations and other bodies involved in library development, library and information science degree granting programs, and training providers. The guidelines are available as the full document in English and translated into many other languages, 
the summary document in English and also translated and the poster in many languages too. The CPDWL Standing Committee welcomes further translations of the guidelines. At the WLIC 2021 online conference, we hosted a panel discussion on this topic with the title, Now, New, Next, sizing the opportunities to redefine and reimagine professional development through online learning. The panel discussion was broadcast on August 17, 2021, followed by a lively question and answer session attended by over 100 delegates and reported in our newsletter. There's a general consensus that the structure and content of the current guidelines are fit for purpose, and there is no need to radically change the substance of the document, and it is also maintains the value of the translation work that has been undertaken already. However, the last two years have seen a change in access to training online due to the pandemic. So our CPDWL working group is identifying and collecting the resources that discuss the principles and best practices of online digital virtual learning in the context of CPD, relevant quality assurance standards to take into account regional, cultural and linguistic differences across the world. We have already identified a number of resources, mainly in English, but we realize that there are more resources out there in different languages. So we need to draw on the SC members' local understanding and expertise to share some relevant resources. The collated resources will be reviewed and summarized so that the principles and best practices are captured. The information that is captured will be used to develop new content and guidance for the guidelines for CPD, organized according to the five stakeholder groups. At the WLIC 2022 in Dublin, a poster will be presented and reported further in the news newsletter. The second project is the Coaching Initiative. It is a collaboration between CPDWL and the Management and Marketing section M&M. It started several years ago with coaching face-to-face -face at the WLIC. In times of the pandemic, we offered online coaching via Zoom or other video platforms, and this year we'll have both. In-person coachings in Dublin and the, week, uh, the last two weeks in August online. Why does it make sense to be coached? It focuses on aligning organizational and individual goals with the aim of improving individual performance and ensuring that the organization's mission is achieved. As coaching is different from mentoring, you need well-prepared coaches who are active listeners with questioning skills. They do not need to know the area or subject, but need to ask open-ended questions and listen to the responses to ask follow-up questions to bring the coaches to their own solutions. The risk that you know the subject too well increases the opportunity of mentoring. So sometimes it is useful to have a coach with a completely different business background. And in most cases, it's also helpful to have a coach from outside your institution who doesn't know your colleagues, your leadership, or your institutional particularities. Scientists have found that the solutions you created yourself are enforced more effectively and vigorously, and above all, persevered than those taught by others, more experienced ones. So the perfect tool for new leaders. On our website, we prepared information about the role of coachee and coach. Most of our coaches are serving for several years with best evaluations and participated in the provided training courses for coaches. We already produced some podcast episodes to answer the most frequent questions about coaching. International Coaching, Building New Leaders Globally. That's the title of our coaching session at the WLIC on Tuesday 26, 4.15 to 5.45. The session number 82 will be open for every registered participants without any further registration or any costs for the coaching. Just walk in. We try to offer again different languages to support as many professionals as we can, because sometimes it might even be difficult to describe your problem you want to solve, and it might be much more difficult to do it in a foreign language. The online coaching is two weeks at the end of August will need a registration. We use equity where you can choose a coach 
who will be listed with a short bio and the languages they are fluent in. Every coach will present a calendar with their availabilities. Check out our social media channels so you will not miss the time to register. Third projects are the webinars in cooperation with New Professional Special Interest Group and LAA. Lloyda and Paria already mentioned. New Librarians Global Connection, Best Practices, Models and Recommendations is a series of free quarterly webinars on issues of interest to new librarians. The free webinars are presented by IFLA, CBDWL and NPSIC in, in partnership with the American Library Association. The webinars are mostly held in English, but we had also some in Spanish and in other languages, and we are open for every official IFLA language and beyond. The topics have been identified via a questionnaire and P6 sent frequently to their members, but also subjects we think they might be relevant, and we know experts who are willing to present will be prepared and recorded. The recordings of the webinars are made available shortly after each event. Here are some examples. I will not read them, you can see them in the recording later too. So we are always happy to welcome observers to our business meeting in person during the WLSC or virtually during the year. Watch out on IFLA list when we will mention the next meeting and announce your interest to participate. Here are all the social media channels we use and our website at the IFLA org website. Further news about these and other projects we will publish through our social media channels. Please feel free to follow or, su or subscribe. Thanks for your attention. And of course, we also have a blog with news. Okay, thanks for that. It's really good. Actually, we didn't really plan it this way, but it's really good timing that Congress is coming up because now everybody can be announcing those who do have sessions for people who can, can, can go to Dublin, that's really great. Uh, so we now have about 15 minutes for questions and discussion. Um, so you can start thinking about if you have any questions or anything you'd like to know from the panel, uh, just uh, following out a bit, this is not IFLA related, but just in the, on the topic of leadership, because this is really important for, um, for people going into the profession as well as people at whatever stage of the profession. Uh, within the iSchools organization, I'm the co-chair of what's called the Women's Coalition, which is a, a relatively new part of the iSchools, and it's for anyone who, uh, for women who are looking to develop themselves, maybe taking on leadership roles at whatever stage they are in their careers, and we're planning a mentoring program that will start in September, so we'll be working on developing it over the summer, and starting in September, we're going to have some sort of sort of mentoring circles for uh, with mixing up uh, people at, at different stages in their career uh, to learn about you know what it is as, as women in particular that we face that is that is different and how we can learn and use our, use our, our best abilities to build ourselves as leaders. So if anyone is interested in getting into that, whether you're a student or just you know part of an iSchool, just let me know and I, I can I can get you connected with us and, and on our list for our mentoring program as well. Um, so saying that, then uh, does anyone have any questions or comments for all of our great speakers? Uh, Diane? Yeah. May I jump in? Sure. I would just like, maybe you can uh, read what Peter Law uh, posted in the chat because uh, then uh, other uh, LA students can uh, view the recording later. This right. is a great opportunity for them. Yes, yes, let's see. Yes, it's uh, from the Library History Special Interest Group. Yes, that way it can be recorded for later. So yes, from the Library History SIG, IFLA will celebrate its centenary in 2027, and currently we are focusing on projects to prepare for that, checking the existence of oral recordings from past librarians, capturing oral story stories from today's librarians, especially oral histories from past IFLA presidents, secretaries, general and IFLA personalities developing a program of research into aspects of IFLA's history with a view to a special session at the Congress's leading up to 2027 and for publication in a book to be published in the centenary year. 
Uh, these projects offer scope for LIS students to help with reference queries and for those looking for a topic for a thesis or dissertation in library history and professional association studies, e.g. applying organizational theory. To learn more, check our website and attend our open session in Dublin. And the, uh, so he also said that they will not be having a, a, pre a presentation this year at the conference, but he did say that you can, you can use that information. You can also link to their area on the LIFLA site and, um, and give other students opportunities to participate, whether it's in that program or, or other programs. Um, I'll be telling my students about this as well. It's probably too late for this year because my students do dissertations in the, in the summer and they've already got their topics, obviously. But um, Peter, I'll, I'll definitely consider this for next year. And let's see. I have a question here, how can student, students in Nigeria benefit from all these educational programs available here? Does, it, it, does anybody want to say anything about that from the panel? I, I, think, I think we're all quite open to receiving emails. If you go to the IFLA website and look at the different special interest groups and find out uh, the contact details of, of the chairs and the leaders and people in charge of different programs, uh, does anyone want to add anything to that? Yeah, I would like to jump in, uh, Diane, if you don't mind. Uh, we hope to have the uh, coaching online sessions really open. Um, IFLA asked us to offer these only for IFLA members. So uh, if the Nigerian students um, can offer um, a membership number about their library association, about their library school, um, they are happily welcome uh, to participate in the online coachings. We will publish these via IFLA list and our social media channels. Great, thanks. Anyone, anything from any other stick on this? Oh, Edward, did you? Edward's taking a question for us. I, yeah, I, I just wanted to acknowledge um, what, what Yuriki mentioned, but I guess I think all the sections here um, organize a massive amount of uh, webinars, and a lot of the webinars are recorded, um, and, and they're definitely made available to all. I think the challenge sometimes is finding them, um, but I think the new eFlow website has tried to you know capture most of the webinars across the different sections. So I think the recordings are a great way um, for, for students anywhere to sort of be, um, you know, just watch something that was that was done that, that, that interests them. Yeah. Great, thanks. Anything from anyone else on that question? Okay. Um, anything anyone else wants to know about from all of the presentations that the panelists can answer, or if we can answer anything uh, in terms of the BSLISC or SET? Uh, Suzanne and I are the co chairs of this webinar program for students. So it would also be interesting to hear from any students that are here today, uh, if you want to just put it even in the chat uh, about so we can start planning. Our webinars, but we'll be taking a break for the next few months or over the summer if you're in the Northern Hemisphere. Uh, to then we'll start up again in the autumn. So if there are any topics maybe that you would be interested in hearing about that we could start to think about doing for the coming the coming year, new academic year, if you wanted to just maybe put them in the chat and we'll try to take some notes on that and take that into consideration when we start planning for next year. We always want to make sure that what we're doing is 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 important for students to make sure we're covering the right things for you. I guess everyone's tired from exams and everything is done this year. No more. No, not too many questions today, but. 
may, may I <laughs> say in? Yeah. I, I, I would just like to say that uh, these uh, all presentations were very interesting and uh, for me as a specialist as well. And uh, I uh, got to know a lot of interesting things about projects and about what the other units are doing. And uh, uh, I can see uh, that we are very close to each other, to our goals and to our projects and uh, a lot of uh, different corporations uh, inside of the division and inside of FIPWA. Uh, that is, uh, which is uh, great actually. And uh, I hope that uh, uh, LA students that uh, are attending right now our webinar or they, uh, who will uh, watch the recording later will uh, uh, receive a lot of uh, useful resources and uh, uh, instruments how to use and how to become a librarian. And I think they will, these uh, webinars uh, will uh, enrich them as specialists. So I would like to, uh, to thank uh, all uh, speakers who uh, represented uh, their units today. And, uh, thank you very much for your time. Thank you. And thank you, Albina, for uh, as committee chair for getting all these speakers organized um, in a relatively short amount of time. It was really quite amazing <laughs> that you got everyone together so quickly, especially at this time of year. So thank you very much for doing that. And yes, we will. If you go to our YouTube channel, uh, you can see the webinar series there, and this one will be posted uh, hopefully relatively soon. And then we'll share the link to it on social media and it will be on the Division C webpage as well. So uh, thank you all very much for joining us today. I hope you enjoyed it and learned a whole lot about Division C. And have a good break if it's your summer coming up. And we will see you back hopefully sometime in September in the autumn. Thanks very much.